so I can't believe that that um <clears throat> I don't even know if somebody's in my computer that they just you, I saw that they just um they just shut off my com the camera on my phone I mean my, on my computer just shut off automatically in the middle of me talking <laughs> for no reason and now it's like this is really crazy I don't even use Bluetooth at all and now it's um it's like is somebody else is in my computer because m my computer like <clears throat> I had the computer off and I had it fully charged the last time I used it made sure it was fully charged and then I started using it it was 91% and I'm like how and now it's down to 68% and it's acting all kinds of weird I'm not even on the internet <clears throat> Um, and my phone is not, I mean, my computer is not charged up. I mean, it's not plugged in, you know. So that was not my fault that, um, the other, the other, um, video cut off against my will. Y'all saw that because my hands are not even on the computer, computer, you know. So, <coughs> it seemed like. I really have to, my own biological family members. I think they passionately hate me worse than the foster family. The foster family seem a little more merciful, even though they strongly hate me too. <clears throat> but the biological family, they want me destroyed more. And they're just the coldest and the cruelest. And so it's like, <clears throat> I mean, I'm still trying to make sense every out of everything if the foster mom claims she hated or she acted like she hate well she never said I hate she never said she hated but she acted like as if she had strong hatred towards the biological family members <clears throat> and they used to call the biological mom Francis crazy but then the biological mom Francis used to perp me too <clears throat> and the biological dad, Arthur, was an asshole. You know, um, very mean for no reason. And always cussing at people. So, you know. And everybody still idolized and worshipped him. The hell. <clears throat> but now I'm seeing everything for what it really is and everybody for who they really are. And learn to not put anybody, any human on a pedestal and not worship or idolize anybody, <clears throat> you know, so, it's like, back to what I, I, I was trying to talk about my cab driving experiences, <clears throat> you know, um, <clears throat> what, I don't even know if the other video is going to work. Um, let me see. Well, I hope it does work because I would hate to have to um, redo all that all over again, you know. <clears throat> I, just, I guess I'll just give it a chance, but this, um, all right, so... In 2017, <clears throat> I had my Section 8 housing. <clears throat> I was trying to work with Ticket to Work. And <clears throat> even that black female, Stacy Morgan, at America Works, that's the Social Security Ticket to Work program on Poitier Street in New Orleans, <clears throat> um, Miss Stacy was trying to block me from work too and just gave me the run around and play psychological and mental games with me for hmm yeah 
I think it was over a year. Almost a year and a half. And I can't believe I dealt with her for that long. <clears throat> In any temp jobs or little jo job here and there that I dealt with, you know, <clears throat> was, um, I mean, any temp job that I dealt with was, uh, you know, a job that I found on my own, you know, <clears throat> and then when I, she had me go get some of these caregiver, go after some of these caregiver jobs, and then I would go to the one in Terrytown, and, which is part of New Orleans, <clears throat> on the West Bank, and then they say that that somebody would have orientation that day and then I go and then they get mad and scream at me over the phone and say that they're very busy. There's a black lady, her last name was Bailey. I think her, I don't remember her first name. <clears throat> but uh, I think I remember her last name was Bailey and she, she acted like she wanted to block me from working. They just lead you on to think that they want, that they want to help you look, look for jobs and people wonder why I'm such a failure. And I cussed Miss Stacy out a couple of times, you know, for playing so many damn games. And then I reported her <coughs> for um to the America Works Agency in New York. And guess what they did? Took up for her. The white female, she took up for Miss Stacy. And I was really mad. <coughs> And Miss Stacy used it against me and threw it in my face and said, Well, you've used choice words and said things. Well, well, you freaking manipulated me. And and I thought Miss Stacy was just a narcissistic abuser. You know, somebody that's highly narcissistic. Because I had to think more that Miss Stacy was a perp too. <clears throat> Miss Stacy was a perp who a black female who don't want me to get ahead. She admitted to me that she had higher income. That she that she ha, has high put in a high income category. And you're a black woman, and you put in a high income category, <clears throat> and you're gonna tell you. I mean, but then I have a bachelor's degree, and she she herself and a few other people have told me you gotta start from the bottom. <clears throat> and then, but then if I try to, you know, I was all excited about the cab driving job, but um. I, I don't even want to say too much because <clears throat> y'all would try to take me the wrong way, you know, and want me punished. But <clears throat> Stacy tried to block me from the cab driving job and say that I couldn't work that job and that I couldn't do independent contractor. And then she said, you're an independent contractor? You're on your own. Trying to, But then I heard there is a way that you can be an independent contractor with certain jobs and still get your social security benefits under the ticket to work program and it's seeing like most people don't want to freaking help me <clears throat> you know and then last year they had a lady that i talked to that was in texas and she told me that you know she was really encouraging and stuff but <clears throat> due to my battle with street homeless homelessness I couldn't even, um, and plus the, um, the application was too overwhelming. And I had nobody to help me. The application was too overwhelming. Me being sleep deprived and stuff. And it was, well, I couldn't make it through with that. But anyway, <clears throat> um, dealing with Miss Stacy, she tried to say, you're an independent contractor. You're on your own, you know, but she would, I did a video on her last year on my other channel. But it got, you know, my whole, that whole channel got deleted. And I don't have extra space or room to put all my videos, you know. So, and, or the time, <clears throat> you know, to re-download all that all over again. But, um, she, at, even a bus driving job I try to get, she made it like, well, you don't have the mentality to, um, you know, time deal with me, or that's not a good fit for you, or whatever. You just, didn't, bitch, you just don't want me fucking driving like any other narcissistic abusers and perps. You know, 
<clears throat> but I didn't realize this was part of my targeting. I didn't know I was targeted. And I didn't, I mean, and I um didn't realize this, that, kid would, that, you know, the sleep deprivation was part of my targeting. And then, you know, I try to, in 2017, when I finally got, I, I, like, I just defied her anyway and, you know, did what it takes to get that job. And I thought that if you're trying to run a business, I thought Social Security can help you with the funds with that or a certain program or past program, whatever happened to these certain Social Security Social Security programs that can pay you to get back on your feet or pay you to, to put up funds with the business or something like that. I don't know, but even online, Social Security job that they like they couldn't help me <clears throat> or that I was on my own, you know, work from home. And Miss Stacy lied to me and said that they were going to help me with work from home jobs and then try to lie and say that, oh, we never said we'll pay for you, pay this and pay that for you and stuff. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> they set me up for failure and then blamed me. It was nobody else's fault but my own. But it's like when they, when the gang stalkers know I rented a car or, or when they know I made a reservation for to rent a car in advance. They keep me heavily sleep deprived the night before so that I couldn't be able to be functional enough to drive the car the next day. <clears throat> so, um, that's why I, I wish I could find that website that basically say that a targeted individual should be able to have a right to drive just like anybody else. And that if a targeted individual is made to be sleep deprived, then it's the gang stalkers who have blood on their hands if the targeted individual gets into a car accident. So I guess it looks like targeted being a targeted individual and a cab driver, I guess, don't mix. <clears throat> you know, I've had my share of dealing with reckless, abusive, rude cab drivers and the dispatchers. Um, the dispatchers are worse than their drivers with being so rude. So just dealing with you know they say it's super stressful and I know I they people ask I thought you just don't want me to be successful you just don't want me to have a job you know but people acting like they were warning me about how hard how cab drivers they sit so much and I figured well later on I thought well maybe I, I don't I, I don't want to be a cab driver I just want my own personal vehicle I'm blocked from even getting that or blocked from even getting the funds or the money or a job, you know. And then other professed targeted individuals falsely accuse me of just wanting a free handout and being lazy. <clears throat> and it's like, why would y'all say that knowing what the struggle is? <clears throat> you know, and they make it like as if I have a sense of entitlement or whatever. <clears throat> Tell the perps that they're, they're the ones with the sense of entitlement or else y'all... Uh, y'all some uh, fake T.I. perps that are saying this, these things about me, you know. <clears throat> so, um, oh man, I gotta use the bathroom. Y'all hold up.
<laughs> See, that's what I was talking about. You gotta use the bathroom, and just all of a sudden, just random, gotta go with no warning. Like, usually, if you gotta pee, um, it usually take a while for you to have to go bad if you hold it in. But it's just all of us just sudden gotta go pee really bad. And um just all of a sudden gotta go pee really bad. <clears throat> and then <coughs> all of a sudden gotta go pee really bad with no warning, you know. That used to happen to me during my senior year of high school and it those ignorant project ghetto fake crusty kids at school ignorantly laughed and said, Oh, Candy stung the Star Spangled Banner and then peed on herself. <clears throat> it wasn't on purpose. That Risperdal medicine used to make me just random forced urination in the same way that they do with the random forced diarrhea, you know. <clears throat> so, anyway, um, my. I went against Miss Stacy's wishes, and people acted like, "Oh, she's not cut out for that job," or, <clears throat> or um, she, or, or, or you won't be able to handle a cab driving job, or watch out, you being a female, you'll get robbed, and, <clears throat> or you'll drop dead of a heart attack, and you know all these scare tactics. I'm like, well, or they say, "Oh, you're stupid if you go and try to be a cab driver," and. You know, cab drivers get messed over and they don't make no money. I'm like, well, how come other cab drivers say that the ones who are actually doing it, they say they're making it <clears throat> and stuff like that. I mean, <clears throat> well, the cab, one of the cab drivers recently, he told me that he had a slow day. No, he, one time he said he <clears throat> worked, <clears throat> it was September 2nd, he said that he, um, Worked 12 hours and only got $30. And I'm like, wow, that's it's. I was shocked because it's the beginning of the month, <clears throat> you know. But uh, and then the school season, I mean, school is back in session. Maybe it's because of fake coronavirus thing, <clears throat> you know. But I don't want to do Uber or cab driving. I don't have that. Well, I never did Uber or Lyft, but I don't have any. Um, desire to want to drive people around in my car or whatever or any car I drive because <clears throat> I remember um, when I worked for um, alright I worked for Star Cabs in Metairie that, that young girl Brittany <clears throat> Brittany Zorthian was her name <clears throat> and so uh, but let me backtrack. Before I did the cab driving job, I rented a vehicle to test out. I, I rented a Ford Escape to test out uh, to see if I could still drive, you know, before I got that job. <clears throat> and that was during the period they kept me sleep deprived for 18 days. And I almost had it. I mean, I had to go to the emergency room and they tried to say nothing was wrong with me. And that I had the best EKG they've seen all day. With no sleep for 18 days. The best EKG they've seen all, all day. And that happened twice. <clears throat> so, I kept going to the emergency room or needing to go to the emergency room and not knowing what was wrong with me. And I didn't realize that I was being hit with the electronic weapons in my home all this time. <clears throat> you know, so anyway, um, I rented a Ford Escape, you know, just to see if I still got the ability to drive. But earlier that year, I rented um, a Ford uh, Fiesta when I was still in Greenville, South Carolina. Oh, I hated driving that motherfucker. I didn't like driving a Ford Fiesta at all. I hated it. Everything about it. <clears throat> I think it was a Ford Fiesta hatchback. It was a silver one. And I was sleep deprived and didn't realize it. <clears throat> you know, I went. I, I didn't know the law. 
and I didn't know how badly sleep can affect you. I mean, lack of sleep. <clears throat> and that it, I didn't know it was against the law to drive if you didn't have sleep. But people do it all the time. It seems like the gang stalkers never sleep. And they stay in their car, stay driving. And they can intentionally try to run over you with their vehicle. And it's not against the law when they do it. You know? So, <clears throat> I was... I drove... Um, it wasn't related to cab driving, but it's driving, period, in Greenville, South Carolina. <clears throat> I rented the Ford Fiesta. And it's like I was trying to get a car reservation and was a asking a list of questions and was wondering why everybody was rude as fuck at um, the Enterprise in Greenville, South Carolina, when I was trying to ask questions, um, like September of 2016 then. Around February 2017, I finally uh, rented a vehicle. I was told that me being homeless on the streets, I can't eat rent or finance a vehicle until or unless I have a permanent place to live with proof of an electricity bill. So, <clears throat> um, I went to drive out in the Blue Ridge Mountains, like past Traveler's Rest. And I don't know if any of y'all have driven in that area. The Blue Ridge Mountains was, and I didn't realize I was being gang stalked at the time. When I first got in that, uh, for, and it had been a long time since I've dr driven, or the first time I rented a car in so long, <clears throat> because they had me blacklisted from Enterprise from 2005 before Hurricane Katrina that, when my own family set me up. That's another story. I don't know if I talked about that before. But, um, <clears throat> I thought I was blacklisted. <sighs> Excuse me. And put on a do not rent list. I was told that I was blacklisted and put on a do not rent list for the rest of, for, of, for the rest of my life for every enterprise in the whole world. But come to find out. In 2015, I think it was, I was still living in Los Angeles, and I asked for, um, you know, a, I tried to give it another chance to ask about, um, I thought I was still banned from written from Enterprise, and every time I passed by the Enterprise locations in Los Angeles on the bus and stuff, Los Angeles metro area, I would get mad and have flashbacks about my sister Ramona setting me up to get banned. Um, set me up with that car accident and stuff. <clears throat> you know, I just had... It was a Friday, February 18, 2005, before Hurricane Katrina. I almost lost my life that day. And then nobody fucking cared. <clears throat> you know, that they did more street theater and setups. You know, set me up to freaking wreck. You know... And I didn't realize, I don't know if it was witchcraft or technology <coughs> that they used to set me up to wreck the car, you know, and then use that to justify further that, okay, that's proof that Candy doesn't have the mentality or the sense to drive a car and that she shouldn't be on the road. Tell that to the gang stalkers who, even yesterday, black people and white people or whatever, but your own race of people, your own kind, deliberately try to run you over. What I mean, if you sitting at a, at a stop sign and I'm crossing the street, you wait till I pass your car to put, start going, <clears throat> like as if you're really this close, this close to try to to hit me, and then you accelerate really fast. And so you're an attempted murderer. So who's the one who has no business being on the road? The gang stalkers? Yeah, y'all the ones who, the narcissistic abusers who drive reckless and make me feel unsafe in a car. And you drive on a speed on a highway with your hands free. And, and like you, Janet was doing that and also uh, that Hispanic guy and, and certain family members and a few other people. You get in a car with them and then they drive on a highway with no hands on the wheel and speeding at 90 or 95 to 100 miles per hour <clears throat> you know 
you're speeding at 95 or 100 miles per hour, and then you deliberately take both hands off the wheel, and you're driving in the left lane on purpose just to make me nervous. So anyway, <clears throat> I drove uh, in 2017 through the Blue Ridge Mountains to try to get to this um, natural, uh, all right, this website called findaspring.com. <clears throat> they have certain places where you get natural water. <clears throat> and that was so beautiful for me to get access to that natural spring alkaline water through those through those mountains. And I had to drive by several times to finally find it. <clears throat> and I actually went to um this kind of park or whatever. I don't remember the name of the park. But you have to drive down to pass, I accidentally passed and I almost gave up the fact that I couldn't find it but I finally found it and I felt like I was not going to give up um, and I rented the car solely for the purpose of trying to get that special water and that special water <clears throat> um, it helped me like it helped me lose weight and detoxify my body in a way that no bottled or tap water could ever do. I mean, it was so amazing, this water, special kind of natural water from the earth. Um, I, had, I had pictures of it. I think I still do. I have to go find them. <clears throat> and I, when I was driving um, <clears throat> on the Blue Ridge, I mean, driving on those those roads on the Blue Ridge Mountains and I was scared constantly fearing that I would fall off a cliff and I didn't realize that I was being gang stalked at the time <clears throat> and um I think those people at Enterprise were extra rude on purpose because they didn't want me renting a vehicle <clears throat> and, and it's like um they really think they had the authority to make you pay for what you didn't ask for or pay for you didn't, something you didn't want. But I hated driving that uh, Ford Fiesta. I mean, it was 2017 and he gave me a 2015 car and said, well, we keep the cars kind of new. Well, that ain't freaking new. That's a couple of years old, <clears throat> you know. So uh, <clears throat> I was expecting a damn 2017 vehicle. So anyway, um, <clears throat> it's like they won't allow me to choose what car I want, what vehicle I want to rent. You know, um, they just give you what they want you to have. Even when I went to go and buy, the, well, finance that Hyundai Elantra, that wasn't originally what I was trying to get, that black one. But I liked it because it was black. <clears throat> but I was trying to get the green one with the sunroof, and that guy told me, you can't get that car. The scam guy. That, and that's another video. I don't know if I did a video talking about my Hyundai Elantra um, experience. You know. But when I drove a few years ago. <coughs> through the um, Blue Ridge Mountains. I'm sorry. I keep checking my phone. Um, when I drove through the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, it's like they had this guy like you had to drive five miles per hour and then the guy <clears throat> was frustrated at me driving the speed limit and, and when I'm on the road driving on a highway I'm the only one driving the speed limit while everybody else is speeding really super like flying really fast and then if I go, if, if the speed limit is 45 and I go 46, I get pulled over. I'm like, ma'am, do you know how fast you were going? Um, does it make sense for you to speed that fast? Dangerous out here. Shut, bitch, shut the fuck up. You know, yeah, the bully fag cops. <clears throat> so, you know, I should have as much right and opportunity to drive as anybody else, you know. <clears throat> so, anyway... Um, they had this guy, I think the vehicle was yellow, and I was, and it seemed like 
I was wondering why when I was driving, and the speed limit said five, certain areas five miles per hour, and other areas said ten miles per hour. And I'm like, what evil are people doing that they deliberately trying to um manipulate and maneuver and set me up to fall off a fucking cliff? Why are they doing this? <clears throat> you know, but God must have been protecting me at that time. I did pray before I went and drove off, you know. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, I got the water that I wanted. And that lasted me quite some time. And I said that water, it was beautiful. And it really helped me. And it helped clean me out, too. Natural water. I wish I could re-experience that again, that water. <clears throat> um, so... I, yeah, that, that guy in a yellow vehicle acting like he was, you could tell that was a narcissistic abuser because he got frustrated and impatient at me driving the dog on speed limit <clears throat> and then got frustrated and just ran, oh, I mean, just like sped around me, went around me and was disgusted and then sped the rest of the freaking way. <clears throat> you know, and then I saw everybody else speeding really fast. Wow, the speed, I'm the only one that has to obey speed limits. It's like when a, <clears throat> a narcissistic control freak, fake friend or family member, if I speed, they want me to go to speed limit. If I go to speed limit, they want me to go slower. If Or if I go slower, they get frustrated and want me to speed up really fast on purpose to set me up to get a ticket. And then <clears throat> your own relative sets you up to get a ticket and then laugh and use that to justify why you have no business or mentality to drive, or that you should never drive a car again, or you should never rent a car again, or that you should stop renting cars, you know, stop renting cars and never drive ever again, you know, one of the ladies from you and old, Miss Ellen Levitov, <clears throat> she tried to tell me, that's one of the ladies that told me I should never stop, stop writing on chalkboards, that's one of the ladies who told me you should stop renting all those cars, and then she, I didn't realize she was a perp too, and she got hateful and turned against me. She used to love me. And then she got hateful and just randomly turned against me. She waited till that situation with the Tony guy. <clears throat> I mean, ever since the chalkboard situation, she started to um, act different towards me. <clears throat> and then had never respected me ever since then. And then, you know, she told me, you need to stop using the MySpace. You know, get off that MySpace back in 2006, but then she was trying to dodge and avoid me after Hurricane Katrina, <clears throat> you know, but she doesn't work at UNO anymore, you know, but anyway, um, so I was working, I tried to get a job to work at, because I was desperate for a job, and my, that was during the time when Trump had, um, t was taken out from Medicare Part B, for those three months. And he took out $134 a month. <clears throat> but I finally got the job. With the cab. And. I I have a whole college degree. And I think Brittany. Was six years younger than me. <clears throat> and she tried to say. Oh I just make, need more to make sure you know how to read. And know how to spell. When, when I told her I have a college degree. <clears throat> but. B Brittany was a perp. And she was the owner of that cab company. They say she come from being a stripper to a cab cab company owner. <clears throat> and everybody laughed and mocked her about that, you know, about her being and, and nobody even Metri Cab, I never tried M E T R Y Metri. They call it Metri in Louisiana. They call it Metri sometimes. So <clears throat> they have a company called Metri Cab. I never worked for them. But Star Cabs I forgot what the other name they used to call it. And then Brittany lied and said that. Brittany lied about a lot of stuff. And was very dishonest. <clears throat> you know. And I, they gave me a fucked up car. That bailed out on me. The first day I started to drive. And then, nobody, and then the car broke down on me. And there was no other cab drivers. Or no, no Brittany. They were all ignoring my calls and stuff. And just left me stuck on a stuck and stranded <clears throat> you know with with no you know they left me stuck and stranded <clears throat> and they had this black lady was like a secretary who did the work all wrong 
and her name, she's not even, I can tell, she's not even from New Orleans. Because a black lady named Delphine, she's the top country. And she saw me off first sight and hated me. <coughs> and Brit, I mean, and uh, Delphine was, I didn't know then, but Delphine was definitely a perp <coughs> that d deliberately tried to block me from working for Britney and being a cab driver. <coughs> and, um, Daphne might have been one of those black Masonic witches, you know. <clears throat> um, and Brittany said that Daphne was doing the work all incorrectly and all wrong. And she kept Daphne hired. She didn't fire Daphne. <clears throat> and Brittany was making income like over 100000 a year. And Brittany was a slut. And then she had this fake-ass boyfriend named Nick Brown. And Nick, um, like, they falsely accused me of owing them money when they told me, I think, they say new cab drivers don't have to worry about deposit the first month. I mean, I'm sorry, the first week or something like that, I don't remember. remember. And they got mad and said, you owe us money. And Nick, Nick was just, Brittany probably broke up with Nick and he had to, like, he was, Cole Oni. I'm like, you just a fucking boyfriend or fiance. You acting like you fucking married to her, you know? <clears throat> but he said, we are a business and not a charity. And you owe us money, <clears throat> you know? But Daphne set me up to go so, so broke that I had to beg on the streets. And one man that worked at the seafood place got really nasty with me and because I asked just for 75 cents for bus fare and I was financially doing that horrible um and Brittany certain things Brittany told me was free I don't remember exactly what it was but definitely made me pay this fee and that fee or wait till the last minute <coughs> um, to tell me what well, the motor vehicle report would cost this much and this would cost that much or whatever I thought Brittany said it was free you know so then they were saying I owe them money, and um, they kept me sleep, super sleep deprived on purpose, and then they gave me a car that was stalling on me the, the first day. Um, I was not even functional, <clears throat> and it's like, what am I doing wrong, you know? And then <clears throat> the first day, I think I made eighty dollars, and half of the both days like i had possession of the cab for four days in 2017 and uh, um glenn's cab in 2018 that was the case too due to my sleep deprivation <clears throat> i had kept the cab i had possession of the cab for four days but only was able to work and drive for two days and then turn the car have to turn, turn the car back in <clears throat> because of sleep deprivation getting worse and plus you know, you give me a car that breaks down on me and then there's nobody there to help. <clears throat> and so, um, there were a few cab drivers that worked for Brittany that gave me some encouragement. And I trained with Mr. James. I don't remember what, what his last name was, but Mr. James, <clears throat> um, I'm starting to wonder if he was a narcissistic abuser also. He had a lot of perv on his mind, but he didn't try anything on me. But he was always making sexual comments and sexual remarks and stuff. <clears throat> but he gave me some encouragement too, but he seemed like he was kind of stingy and money hungry. <clears throat> you know, but he said he used to be a former police officer and a bus, and he was being a cab driver and a bus driver at the same time. <clears throat> but Mr. James, <clears throat> um, he he used to be a police officer and he admitted that basically police officers just basically play a role just for the money. They don't really care about enforcing laws like that, you know? So he's, he was saying that police officers just play a role for the money. <clears throat> and he, and he broke a lot of laws himself. Even after he retired from being a police officer, he would like get pulled over for no, t I mean, <clears throat> when he told me that he got pulled over, for um, you know, for driving like a twenty-five dollar ticket for driving with no seatbelt and stuff, you know, <clears throat> I, I trained with him for three days, and that was supposed to be free. 
They told me it was free. And then Brittany and her boyfriend lied and said I owe them money. And then Brittany was mad <clears throat> because uh, Brittany was mad because it was heavy competition with Uber and Lyft versus the cab drivers. The cab drivers were losing, I mean, the cab companies were losing businesses. I mean, they were losing, like, their business was very threatened by Uber and Lyft. And people said, that's why don't go with Uber and Lyft and Airbnb. They said real hotels are being threatened by Airbnb. <clears throat> and real cabs are being threatened by, and I heard about cab drivers committing suicide by losing business. And they had the special kind of medallion or something. And I heard about cab drivers committing suicide, cab drivers being stressed out and dropping dead of heart attacks, all these stories and stuff, you know. <clears throat> and I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to do Uber or Lyft or cab or whatever. I hate Grubhub because Grubhub straight denied me. I mean, I try to go into gig economy, but they said do not go into gig economy because it's your new age slave. If you do Uber and Lyft or Rover or Wag or We Go Look or um, <clears throat> you know, when I thought it was seemed like false hopes of money, and you know, with Uber and Lyft and stuff. I, I mean. I was warned against them that they take part in uh, making the way for driverless cars and that Airbnb. I mean, they made it set up like it was a good thing, you know, that basically for the new world order, you won't own your own. You, nobody will be homeowners and nobody will be car owners. You won't own anything. Well, us targeting individuals, we're not allowed to own anything. So they said that's condition you, conditioning you and setting you up that, you know, you're going to have to be forced to live with strangers for the new world order and no individualized family that everybody be just lumped together, <clears throat> you know. And they said that when, when they have, it takes a village to raise their child, they said that's new age teaching because parents are supposed to train and raise their own kids, not some strangers raising your kids, you know. So anyway, <clears throat> so what? Um, they messed over me all kinds of ways, and I remember one day I got lost and accidentally hit the wrong direction and accidentally drove on a Huey P. Long Bridge. I, I, I accident. I, it was at nighttime, and I made it from the Huey P. Long Bridge from um, Elmwood or Harahan or whatever, <clears throat> and got on a Huey P. Long Bridge. I was sleep deprived now. And the very second I got on the bridge, a whole bunch of vehicles were honking their horns so badly, like as if they felt like I didn't belong on the road. That that must have been gang stalkers who might have maneuvered me to or mind controlled me to do that, and I was sleep deprived. But I didn't get into not one car accident. I promise you. <clears throat> and um, on one of the days that I worked, like my very first customer was not all that far from where I was living at in Jefferson, Shrewsbury. And he was an African guy. My very first run that Saturday and I was sleep deprived. And I took him all the way to the airport. And he was impressed that my it was my first time. And he it was an African man and he was impressed at my driving. You know, he was impressed at my driving and I was sleep deprived and he thought I drove so great and he commended me that I got him to the airport quickly and efficiently. <clears throat> and so I had a couple of other runs. Um, it was like Christmas Eve. <clears throat> and then um, they had this guy. All right. He seems sketchy. And he took me some weird long way to get him to New Orleans from uh, Harahan. <clears throat> and he gave me twenty dollars because the ride costed nineteen dollars, and I don't know what was wrong w with me. Um, I had a mental glitch, I guess, from the sleep deprivation. I would never overcharge or try to scam anybody, but <clears throat> it was kind of sketchy because there was females who. 
who said two feet two or three females said that they were catching a ride and when i came it was nothing but one guy that got in the car <clears throat> and if, i had a few other sketchy moments too but this one guy had an attitude and was like i can have my dollar back He's trying to say, can I, I can have my dollar back. And he had his fist ball. And he wanted to fight me over a dollar. And he falsely assumed I was trying to keep his dollar. <clears throat> you know, he was sitting in the car. But, I, I mean, I don't, like, my mind was just in a different world. You know, I guess with the sleep deprivation and me moving slow. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I gave him his dollar back. And, you know. It was just one dollar, but I wasn't trying to keep it or anything. But he that's what, the way he trying to make it like, and he try he acting like he wants to whip my fucking ass over a dollar. But um, you know, he didn't say anything. He just gave me twenty, and it cost it nineteen. And he was sitting there waiting. I can have my dollar back, you know. And then <clears throat> after that, I had a couple of other runs. You know, and then that I got lost, and one person sent for me to come over there to. I didn't know. I thought it was just driving people around. I didn't know that was doing certain tasks or errands associated with the job too. I thought it was just transporting people from place certain place. But I thought I was gonna pick up one person. This white person cussed me out from A to Z and was very mad and told me I should never be a cab driver. Because I showed up and I didn't know that he wanted to get his cable jumpers or whatever. That he called the cab just to get cable jumpers or whatever. Um, to get his car jumped or whatever. I didn't know. I thought he, he was just getting a ride. <clears throat> and he got mad and cussed me out and told me. And I cried because it was my first day. And I rode for more, I think more than eight hours. And I was in Metairie. I drove all around Metairie. <laughs> And I drove all that long and was sleep deprived. Not one crash, not caught one car wreck. Then the second day, the next day, was Christmas Day, and I drove all day. And um, you know, they tried to tell me I had to change the oils and the flute. I had to do it myself to keep the car clean and to change the oils and the fluids in the car every single day. And and the car kept breaking down on me. They did that on purpose. Because then I was heartbroken to saw to, that I saw that it was another cab driver, cab number 64. <clears throat> um, that, that was my cab, cab number 64. And then um, they, it seemed like the cab jumped, I mean, the cab kept breaking down on me and nobody wanted to help me. And then... It was a raggedy old, old cab, too. It was a police interceptor, a Ford, uh, Ford police interceptor car. And I'm like, well, I can't believe I'm driving just about a police car. <laughs> but I kept, uh, it's like the next day, another night on no sleep. Some cab drivers told me that they get no sleep. They say, you need insomnia. One of them said, you need insomnia for this job, you know. But I, I didn't know that it was against the law to drive, sleep deprived, or they say it's equivalent to drunk driving. <clears throat> but, um, it's like, after that, um, <clears throat> the next day, <clears throat> it was Christmas, and, um, I remember feeling woozy, but still went out to drive anyway, and, um, Still it made eighty dollars that day, but forty of it went to gas. <clears throat> Something just like the day before. And um I <clears throat> went and um drove you know, did my rounds and one lady I think was a Catholic and she got mad and cussed me out because I got lost in a certain area in Metairie was very confusing and she got mad and blamed me and said I caused her to miss her church service her Catholic church service you know she got mad and went up and cussed me out and I got lost because <clears throat> it was very confusing uh, it was one street they had two areas in Metairie with the same street name or whatever 
I don't remember um, what the names were. And then, you know, it's like, I guess, me be being attacked and abused by other cab drivers, the dispatchers, plus customers. <clears throat> and I just couldn't handle the abuse of everybody, you know, yelling at me and getting on my case and everything. <clears throat> and then when, you know, later on that day, which was Christmas Day, I accidentally um, drove the, I, ex I went on, I accidentally got on a causeway bridge and then, you know, I thought I was going to fall asleep behind the wheel, but I think God must have been protecting me at that time because I was, my I was nerfed all the time. Like, no, no, like, what did I do? Well, like, I accidentally turned the opposite way of what I was supposed to go. And I actually, when, <clears throat> where I lived that was opposite of the direction towards the Causeway Bridge. And I ended up in Mandeville and went to that Win Dixie, which was the rich folks Win Dixie with all the organic, natural, healthy food for a decent low price. And then I had to pay a five dollar, and I drunk. I ate two apples and drunk some water, and that helped keep me up um, and a little functional for a little while. <clears throat> and then um, I went and um, drove back. Like coming from Mandeville, I had a, I was lucky to have just that five dollars <clears throat> that I. Um, so happened to um end up having to pay a surprise five dollar toll and that was all the five dollars i had and i drove that back to my house and then that retard ramona and her boyfriend elliot i was super sleep deprived and was like after that i was scared of driving on bridges and stuff and we went by that retard Ramona, my biological sister Ramona, her boyfriend Elliot's daughter, I think her name is Nicole, and we went by her house, and I was trying to ask her about Uber and Lyft, and she got an attitude with me. I think they put stuff in her head because she was rude, and if I asked questions, she got an attitude that didn't want to help me <clears throat> and stuff. And so, um, like, she didn't try to help me and then Elliot got mad and screamed at me and said that the cab company is like what it, I think what did he say I think he was saying like Elliot well he went and he's a narcissistic abuser to a sociopath <clears throat> and him and that retard Ramona I mean <clears throat> um it seemed like Elliot got mad and, and make it like as if they were pimping me and that I'm stupid and they're pimping me as a cab company and that they fucking over me really bad and I'm stupid. And then that time said I don't have the mentality to drive. <clears throat> and then he tried to say that now nah, I better quit the cab drive, quit the cab driving job and I better get with Uber. <clears throat> and earlier that day I was talking to, I was at Ramona's house and I was saying that you know, Mr. James was saying that I was stupid if I let people know about my, I mean, if I tell them about my taxes and, 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 and he, he tried to say, don't report taxes. And I told Ramona and Ellie about it. I didn't know that they were narcissistic abusers or that they were gang stalking perp, perps or perping me, you know. <clears throat> but Mr. James tried to tell me you, that I would be stupid if I would go and report my earnings to the IRS. That I better keep it all my earnings to myself. And that I don't have to let them know, you know. And then, <clears throat> as dirty and scammy as Ramona and Elliot are, they self-righteously try to be, you better pay your taxes! You know, because I, 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 I said that I wanted to pay my taxes, but I'm like, what should I do? You know, I, don't, I didn't know. Me trying to ask for advice. I'm like, you better pay your tax. Like, got all my. I'm like, they're the type of people who would, you know, deliberately, if they had a business like that, they wouldn't report their taxes. So they're being self righteous and hypocritical. You know, just want to look self righteous and just wanted me to feel bad. You know, but they themselves have done crooked, dirty shit. And I never really done anything crooked or dirty. You know, I would get called stupid for honestly paying my taxes. 
you know, so, um, and I even said I wanted to pay my, do the right thing and pay my taxes. And then I, you're bad at paying, being self-righteous, you know, as much crooked and dirty, scammy stuff they're doing, you better, you tell me I better pay my taxes. <clears throat> but anyway, when Elliot was saying that, what was it? It was something degrading that he said. I think he was trying to say that that they're pimping me or exploiting me or something that made me feel really bad. And then Elliot was yelling at me and calling me stupid. The, yeah, my sister's boyfriend. It was Elliot and his friend ganged up on me and called me stupid for the cab driving job while, they, while their daughter was driving around in nice shit like a BMW and had a nice ass house and doing Uber and Lyft. Not Lyft, but at least just Uber. <clears throat> she had an attitude and didn't want to help me. And that's the I, the only reason why I wanted to go over there. Just to ask, you know, for advice about driving for Uber and stuff. You know. <clears throat> she just said simple stuff. Like simple responses with an attitude. Like she wanted nothing to do with me. And as I said, Ramona and them, they put stuff in her head against me in advance before I showed up over there. But Ramona acted like she was inviting me to go over there. You know, and then it was a fake shitty ass so-called Christmas dinner when, you know, I said, you know, quit celebrating Christmas anyway, because when I heard about it, but, you know, I was still disappointed that they had a shitty dinner. I don't even remember what they had, but, you know, <clears throat> it wasn't even much of nothing. And so that's like for uh, when I went by Janet and it had like Memorial Day. I mean, Janet's, uh, no, it wasn't Memorial Day. What, oh, it was Easter. <clears throat> and I'm supposed to not celebrate Easter, but all they had was ribs and nothing else at Janet's, uh, boyfriend's mom's house. And I'm like, where the hell is the food? When it, when you call this an Easter dinner, it's nothing but ribs and chicken and no potato salad, nothing outside of that, just ribs and chicken. And that's weird. You know, have a whole freaking feast if you're going to have a dog on meal. You know, and they're driving around a freaking Buick Veranos and nice shit. But all you can afford is just freaking chicken. Uh, barbecue chicken and ribs. And no potato salad at least or none of that, you know. <clears throat> but I guess that's the hood way of freaking celebrating holidays, you know. The ghetto way of celebrating holidays. <clears throat> but anyway... It might come back to me later on, but I think, you, you know, what Elliot was trying to say, you know, about that the cab company was exploiting and using me or whatever, like he really cared because then I was sleep deprived and, and, you know, I guess had enough for the day and was too, after the incident with the Huey, P, I mean, the Causeway Bridge, <clears throat> um, he, he got mad and, um, screamed at me and tried to make sure that he tried to force me, him and Ramona teamed up together and gang up on me and made me feel ashamed about being a cab driver. And when I was all excited about get, being a cab driver and I was sleep deprived and I passed the um, written test for the um, to be a cab driver. I, I, the, the class D uh, chauffeur's license, I passed the written test so easy. And then um, that lady at the DMV, it was on December 11th, the gay brother Mark, my gr biological grandma Ruby, and the drunk lady, drunk Aunt Yvonne, they all shared the same birthday. But it was on that day, so happened, I took the test, and it was a black female at the Metairie DMV, and she wouldn't allow me to have my earphones in or nothing to be, I mean, me trying to avoid being distracted so I can concentrate and focus. But I could have scored even higher on the test. <clears throat> you know, so um, here in Pensacola, they don't have a chauffeur's license. You just have a regular driver's license and you can be a cab driver. But that chauffeur's license, you know, I upgraded, you know. And so Ramona and Elliot, <clears throat> um, they got mad and forced psychologically and mentally. You ever heard of coercion, manipulation, or, you know, what narcissistic abuse, like, coerced me in my head, you know? And so Elliot made it like as if he, like, I was told to 
in the contract to not allow anybody else to drive the cab. <clears throat> you know, nobody else. And just like what happened with that Verda girl, um, and with the car accident, and like after it was later on the day after the car accident in two thousand five. You know, she acted like she had the authority to confiscate my keys and wait until after she, after like 15 or 20 minutes of her driving my rental car in 2005, she tried to say, well, now I'm driving on a suspended license for something my husband did and you shouldn't drive on the interstate from now on. You drive on, a, you should drive on a ferry. Well, my car accident didn't happen on the interstate, <clears throat> you know, but she took advantage, you know. And the, the, like, I was wondering why in New Orleans, everywhere I go, every which way I turn, everybody using and taking advantage of, of me and stuff. But when I go to different cities and states, like California, I had a couple a couple of instances, but not constant. But people try to take advantage of me, and then I get you know quote unquote reprimanded or punished. Like when somebody try to scam me and take advantage of, of my uh, disabled card. And I almost got a my bus card that day. That's another video right there. And I almost got arrested that somebody took advantage of my, um, try to bully me and take advantage of my disabled bus card. <clears throat> so what Elliot did was he made it like he had the authority to confiscate my cab car keys. And then he illegally drove my car, the cab car. And then... Ramona knew the whole time and didn't say nothing. She didn't stand up and say, Elliot, don't do that to that girl. Don't do that to my sister. No, she just sat there and was complicit. And I was so sleep deprived and couldn't think properly. <clears throat> and I was kind of mentally out of it. And he had, the, like, he had the authority to confiscate my cab car keys. And then he drove it and was driving very slow. And, and, and he lied and said I didn't have to drive over any bridges. He's like, man, that ain't no bridge. That's the overpass, man. Or whatever. You know, he was almost 60 years old and trying to talk like a 20-year-old thug. <clears throat> and so Elliot illegally drove the car. And um, Elliot drove the car. And... um. We got to the Ramona's house safely, but he, he did like Verda did. He waited till like at least 15 minutes after driving the car. And that's when he said that he's driving with no license and that his license got suspended many years ago. And I was like, well, what the fuck? You know, <clears throat> so, you know, I was afraid of him setting me up to get a, one of those like red light camera tickets and stuff. This happened a few years ago. <clears throat> and it's like, now that I know about narcissistic abuse and more about my targeting and stuff, I'm more vigilant. I didn't know what was going on back then, you know? So now, I mean, people been like, they might be like, well, you should have gotten, you, sh you should have, um, you know, <clears throat> you should have gotten in trouble. No, well, why didn't, they intentionally did me wrong. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And I didn't know, they said being sleep deprived was like similar to being drunk you know i didn't know but i wouldn't i'm not going i wouldn't do that again you know <clears throat> and then um it's like they forced me to quit the cab driving job and then on that monday december 26th they you know they had me forced to turn in the car keys as soon as possible and then next thing you know that night of december 26th was the first time I slept not like normal within the next few weeks was sleeping like normal when I had no car to drive. And it's like, <clears throat> I wish people would understand, you know, <clears throat> rather than blaming me, people do, I mean, and then Ramona tried to play stupid like she didn't know what was going on, but she knew the whole time and Ramona doesn't drive. And then she tried to say, well, oh, oh, she tried to play stupid and be like, oh, oh, I, I, I thought it was okay for people to drive around with no license. Bitch, you know what the fuck was going on. I didn't know Elliot didn't have a license at all, you know. But hell, Brittany was a crooked cab company owner anyway. And, I mean, they know that I would have done something honest. 
<clears throat> and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have stood for anything crooked, you know. <clears throat> and so, um, it's like <clears throat> Brittany sitting there thinking she was so overgrown. And then I heard Brittany was caught up in some criminal stuff herself. <clears throat> and they said that that cab company should have been shut down by all the crooked stuff her and Nick were into. <clears throat> so I don't remember everything, but every time I got in the car, I quit riding, even riding as a customer with Star Cabs for a while and was riding with Metri Cab. And they had something to say about Star Cabs all the time. Every, they hated Britney. They hated Star Cabs. <clears throat> and they said that they named the Star Cabs because it was named after her stripper name. <clears throat> you know, Britney was support and her dad were involved in a, and her dad or something got a, arrested for something that they got they were involved in so much criminal stuff you know intentionally criminal you know not in a situation with me being and i heard that they said that ellen was basically um p-r-e-y preying on me being in, in a weak state of mind and they said that my me being sleep deprived my my inhibitions were lowered so he could take advantage of me and then, you know, they set me up like that's the kind of setups they do. And that way me being a target has to suffer or go to jail while they're the ones running free and still living their life. Stank Corlinica style, you know. <clears throat> so they, I, I mean, and then my drunk uncle who passed away in 2018, Daryl, he got mad and screamed at me and say, you will go straight to jail. And he said something about, um. He said, you know what? If anything happened, it's going everything's gonna fall back on you. So like even with not just driving or a car, but me living in an apartment or a house, you know, narcissistic control freak, fake friend or family members would do something crooked in my house and then I have to be told that you were held responsible. If they break something in my house on purpose and then I have to be stuck with the bill, be held responsible. <clears throat> but yet they tell me I don't have the mentality or the sense to drive and they making me they make it imp impairing my mind on purpose with the gang stock and the sleep deprivation I didn't know <clears throat> but now I'm, I find out the truth you know so then in 2018 I tried it again at driving it was just as I became homeless um, around August late July, early August 2018, I quit the zoo job because of workplace mobbing. <clears throat> and I feel like Amanda Fre Frederick, fuck you and you go fuck yourself. I better, I, if I, I better not say something else more offen offensive. <clears throat> you know? So, you know, Amanda was, they said that that was a crooked, a crooked um, scam zoo job. Well, not at the zoo, at the Audubon Zoo, but that third party, um, something. I don't even remember the, it was called, um, Phoenix Snow Group or something. And I was experienced workplace mobbing. And Amanda let all the criminals advance and get ahead and be a team leader. While I would never get to advance and be selected to be team leader. All these young kids. And they had that Charles guy who was, he would come to work high and smelling like weed and she allowed him to be team leader. And that's the kind of criminal she fucking worshiped the team leaders. I was not allowed to speak against her 18 year old teen, team leader sluts who tried to order me around and tell me what to do. Like this girl named Nisi tried to order me around and tell me what to do. And she was like 18 years old. And I said that girl, you know, and, and then Amanda aggressively demanded that I respect Nisi, <clears throat> you know, and Nisi was a narcissistic abuser and she was way younger than me. And all these kids just dishing out orders, telling me what to do fucking children. <clears throat> and that's another story. I did a video on that on my other channel that got deleted. Oh, my voice is getting hoarse. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, um, with the second cab driving job, I was a narcissistic abuser named William. They call him Will. I can't think of his last name at the moment, but he drove for Glenn's cab. He was highly narcissistic, and he said that he had a 
a heart attack at 22. <clears throat> and that's why he started to be an asshole or whatever. He, he said he used to that he they used to bully him so bad and he had a heart attack at 22 and that's when he started to you know be the way he was and he bragged about how he punished his wife from sex and stuff and um yeah i really hated that will guy but it was he i remember um he falsely accused me i, I mean he tried to act like he thought he had total control over how i should have my cab car <clears throat> they tried to tell me I should not be allowed to have groceries in the car or or that I shouldn't have this or that in the car. You know, <clears throat> that I should just keep the car empty for the um customers, you know. But me being ho new, freshly homeless, and I had just got that storage unit, and I was freshly homeless. And um, just moved out of that Section 8 house. <clears throat> because of the neighborhood harassment, neighborhood community mobbing and abuse. And they think I'm the weird one that they wait till 1.30 in the morning to start to blast their music and blast their TV on surround sound. And then I'm the crazy one for knocking on their door and telling them something. That's another story. <clears throat> so, um, it's like, um, after that, um, I tried to go in this shelter that was in Harvey. I can't think of the name of it. Was it in Harvey? It was very close to Marrero. I did a video talking about that, too, on my other channel before. Um, let me see. I'm going to try to find it on my phone. The name of that shelter in Harvey um, it was a women, sh a fake hypocrite woman's shelter, and that guy, that's the place where they try to have me sign a non-disclosure agreement of any abuse that they inflict on us, and then y'all say y'all Christian, and y'all, I didn't know what it, what, what, and you know, I was still ignorant about some stuff, some things, I didn't know what non-disclosure agreement was, that basically you, you, you sign a contract, and what, whether they can fuck over you, in any kind of way they want to, and then you can't sue them, or, or you can't get them criminalized, incriminated. But I heard narcissistic abusers always want you to sign non-disclosure agreements while they continue their dirt, while they act like they think they're perfect. You know, so let me see. Yeah, let me see. What's the name of the shelter again? Waymaker Ministries. Waymaker Ministries. <clears throat> That's the um. It's eight oh four First Avenue in Harvey. Even though I I didn't know any better signing that agreement, but guess what? I'm gonna still speak out. I'm gonna still speak out against their asses too. That Charles Johnson guy, he was fake. <clears throat> and you know they had these females there. They tried to lie and say that there was no room and kind of find out they had several empty bedrooms at that shelter. And that guy called himself Anthony N. Smith. He was a narcissistic abuser, highly narcissistic. Um, so, yeah. Um, unity in Louisiana was like the opening. I mean, unity in New Orleans was like the opening doors here. All they, they didn't really help me at all. <clears throat> and so... Um, it's like the um with the cab driver job. It was a white lady from Alabama. Um, when I was at the Waymaker Ministries place, it was a white lady that was in that house. The housemate, a white female, <clears throat> and she was a narcissistic abuser who was not from New Orleans. She was from Alabama, <clears throat> and my. That was my second day with the cab driving job. And then the next day after that, I couldn't take it anymore with Glenn's cab and Gretna. <clears throat> and um, it was like the Will guy, he falsely accused me of running over potholes. And the car had stalled on me. And, and, and you know... It kept breaking down on me. It kept stalling on me. He falsely accused me of running over potholes. I'm like, I didn't run over any potholes at all. 
you know, I was careful to not run over. If I saw a hole in advance in the street, I was not going to drive over it. I move around the other way. <clears throat> so then, like the first day, that Saturday, it was a black female. Um, I don't remember what happened, but I think um, it was another moment <clears throat> where <clears throat> my mind was impaired. Well, I mean, I drove a foreign guy, looking guy somewhere and everything was okay. But the black lady, <clears throat> I think I accidentally um, had a, I don't remember exactly what happened. I think it was a moment where um, I was so sleep deprived and, and non-functioning that I accidentally didn't give her the correct change back. And I apologize. I would never have take, tried to take anybody's money. But I, I said, I'm sorry, and I apologized, and I told her about my sleep deprivation. And she said, you make sure you get some, she got frustrated and said, you make sure you go take care of yourself and get yourself safe somewhere, y you know. <clears throat> and so I just felt like a failure driver, felt like a loser. And, you know, the owner, Mr. Glenn, um, you know, everything just seemed shady with both cab driver jobs. <clears throat> but William told me to sleep in the cab because I was hung newly homeless and he told me to sleep in the cab and sleep right on the property. And he said, yeah, I told them that that you sleep on the property and there are cameras watching you and everything. William act like he was just 24 seven frustrated and just fucking pissed like this constant Argh! like worse than the foster mom kind of just mean, mean, mean and just fucking angry all the time. You know, but he bragged about punishing his wife from sex and and mocked and laughed at her, you know. <clears throat> but um it's like that first day there was a female dispatcher, I don't remember her name, but she acted like she extra loved me. And then they had the white lady named Lindy was the only one driving around in a new Honda Civic while everybody else was driving around in raggedy shit. And that Lindy lady was just abusive and rude. I didn't realize until recently that Lindy was a perp. Um, almost everybody at Glenn's cab and Gretna was a perp. Not every person, but almost everybody. And William treated me like as if I wasn't worried. They had a vacant Lincoln, but he was that coercive and controlling that he tried to control which cab I should drive. And he gave get on purpose to cause me to freak out. He gave me a dirty cab to drive in, a dirty cab with a lot of moths and, and a lot of everything, just everything dirty. And I had to clean that cab out myself. <clears throat> and then uh, he gave me a, a very dirty car that he know damn well didn't work. And they said that they would have men to um, do the oils and fluids for me every day, <clears throat> check them and, and whatever. And all the oils and fluids on both car cabs from both companies drained, like, constantly. Like, they wouldn't even stay in, in, in the container. They just kept draining, you know. <clears throat> and so the car would break down on me, and, and nobody wanted to help me. The only one that wanted to be nice and help me out was the midget cab driver. He was the only one that was nice and helped me out. <clears throat> but then other cab drivers were rude and refused to help. And when I was at that Waymaker Ministries homeless shelter, <clears throat> you know, they just straight, that they that's another, I have to redo that topic all over again. <clears throat> um, but the white lady that's from Alabama, like, she, I don't, she probably was the one who put a flat tire in my car, in my cab, and then, you know, she, pro she probably did, she probably um, was the one who did that. And then she was coercive and pushy and bullyish and acted like she was overly concerned. I just met the freaking lady and she acted like she was overly concerned. I think it was her that deliberately put a hole in a, a flat tire. And then she tried to make, she made a threat to report me through the, tr report me to the transportation department and the health department <clears throat> and stuff like that. And made a threat to have my license revoked and stuff. And like try to frighten me. And all that she did. Just like Elliot. She had no connection with Elliot or anybody. 
and told me that I should quit the cab driving job and drive for Uber. And I was sleep deprived even then. <clears throat> and then next thing you know, once I turned the car cab back in, the cab car back in, sleeping very good. You know, but that first day, that Saturday, the, I was still trying to learn how to operate. Um, the dispatcher, I don't remember her name, but she got mad and screamed at me. And I cried because she got mad and screamed at me because she said that when I was working the two-way or the walkie-talkie or whatever, <clears throat> that um, she got mad and screamed at me because um, she got mad and screamed at me because the uh, I didn't know that the radio was too loud. And she got mad and screamed at me, yelling at, angrily yelling at me and told me to turn it down. And it's like, <clears throat> with everything that was going on, <clears throat> all the other cat, co-worker cab drivers were rude and didn't want to help me, even men. And I didn't realize they were setting the car up to break down on purpose so that when I asked for help, I would be stranded and nobody would want to help me. And then they would use that to justify more, so increase to justify why I have no business or shouldn't be driving. And then, you know, my last day was August 6th, that Monday. And I cried and I turned the car back and then said, cried and said I couldn't take it anymore. And then nobody cared. Nobody was concerned about, you know, they just was like, okay. And <clears throat> um, yeah, I couldn't even continue. You know, even that job was another, like me making $80 in both days, just like the previous job, make $80 in both days and then have to pay half of the $80 towards gas, $40 per day for myself and then, and then the other 40 towards gas. <clears throat> and so um, it was just overall too hard, you know. I, I would, I mean, and then me coming up here to Pensacola, one of the first things I tried to do was get a cab driving job. With Z Trip, that black guy Tracy acting like as if everybody was welcome to drive for Z Trip, and they made it everything sound so promising. But I read the reviews; it was nothing like. I mean, like um, they say, you really it's more like a slave job, you know, that you slaving for them, and then pimping you, and you slaving for nothing. <clears throat> so with Z Trip. You know, every now and then, like they have a black, I mean, a white lady at the local office that was, um, you know, she was wanted me to, was eager for me to come drive. And I just kept putting it off and denying it. At, and I'm like, no, I can't do it because of my sleep deprivation. But I wanted to so bad. I wanted to drive, you know, and they had newer vehicles, you know. <clears throat> but it was a Lincoln Town car that that wheel guy from Glenn's cab, he treated me like, as if I wasn't worthy or deserving to, to drive that Lincoln Town car. And I should stay with the uh, Ford Crown Victoria. You know, uh, one of them was the Mercury. No, with Brittany and the Star Cabs, that was the Mercury Grand Marquis. And then the other car with Glenn's cab, what number was I? Cab, I think I was cab number 20, uh, 20 something. I don't remember. Um, I think I was cab number 27. I think I was cab number 27 or something. Or 26. One of those. 26 or 27. <clears throat> and it was always close to the number of the guy that was training me. <clears throat> but um, some more stuff had happened. I can't remember everything. Um. But it was easier. Uh, and then a few other people with the Z trip said that, um, you know, you'll always have a car to drive or you'll always have a van to drive and you can sleep in your van, you know, the van that you rent from Z trip. But I'm held back from doing it because of the gang stalking and sleep deprivation. <clears throat> you know, I would love to work for Z trip or have a job, but, you know, I, I don't even know if they would tamper with the vehicle on. You know, I don't know why Elliot and the white lady, they did the same thing. They try to make, like, I'm incapable of driving, but the white lady was far more scarier. But, you know, they, <clears throat> and, and then that they had a super prejudiced foreign Indian guy 
who was very super prejudiced that made a threat to call the police on me when I was trying to get air on my tires at, for the cab car and I was not allowed to wait in the store and I bought something. I was a customer and he treated me like as if I was like non-human. These foreign Indian guys, they're worse than the Asians with being so cruel and treat me like I'm not welcome in my own country and hometown where I was born and raised. Your ass is from, uh, I don't know, New Delhi, India. And I'm from born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. And you treat me like I'm unwelcome in my city, in my hometown where I was born and raised. <clears throat> you know, so very, your skin color is darker than mine, and you're very prejudiced and abusive. You know, at that gas station in Marrero, very close to Harvey. <clears throat> so, you know, and then people think, yeah, you're just lazy and making excuses. But then you don't want me driving anyway. <clears throat> you know, so. There was a white lady that was, you know, wanting, she called me up a few times wanting me to come and drive for Z-Trip. And I'm just freaking scared. And the black owner named Tracy, he acted like as if he wanted to block me from driving for Z-Trip here in Pensacola. And, and um, I was in Mobile, Alabama. They had the same Z-Trip and they had a black guy who was really nice. And he was a cab driver. And he said they need people, he said that's all, and he said they need people really bad more so in Mobile, Alabama than Pensacola. They have more people in uh, <clears throat> here in Pensacola than over there in Alabama. He said they needed people so bad. <clears throat> you know, but um, you can start and stop when you want. That's great, you know, but I hate to check. But with the newer cars, I don't know if you're required to check oils and fluids every day. But um, I don't want to be forced to wear a mask. And um, Lucky Cab, I called them, and the dispatch was so abusive. When I called the customer service for Z Trip, they're abusive and mean, and just yelling at you for no reason, like have strong attitude. Like, so I give up on wanting to do cab driving, and you know I'm afraid if I were, I don't have a way to do Amazon Flex. If I were to do, I don't have a vehicle. But you know, if I had a vehicle. And do Amazon Flex. I'm afraid there'll be some problems too. <clears throat> you know, but that I just wanted my own personal vehicle. You know, and no, I mean, and I would rather have my own errand job or my own errand or delivery service on my own, like small delivery or small errands or, or my own company. Well, I wish I could have help with that because I don't know how to go about doing it on my own. But everybody wants to stop me telling me I'm not allowed to do it or, or make it like like in New Orleans. I try to run my own whatever business I could. You know, I try to run my own business. They at the city hall told me I could not run my own business in New Orleans. They didn't want me running a business at all. <clears throat> and then I think I remember I tried to work at the, um, the flea market in Algiers. And I think I remember from what I, if I remember correctly, I think I remember being blocked from work. Like they would try to block me on, like I was, you know, wasn't welcome to work there uh, selling stuff at the flea market. And I guess the best, I, I didn't know until after I left Greenville, South Carolina, that I had the best chance of maybe selling stuff at a flea market in Greenville, South Carolina. <clears throat> in the flea market here in Pensacola, I didn't want to, um, work at the flea market here in Pensacola because the same scam lady with the job with the place on T Street that what's the name that heavenly blessings place I refuse to call her pastor because you're not you're not you're not going to be a scam a scam lady and call yourself pastor then people aggressively demand that I call her pastor Renee that heavenly blessings shelter need to be shut down it's not fit for human for human habitation. <clears throat> and that's the same lady that runs all the flea markets. And that's why I never visited the flea markets. As much as I love flea markets and farmers markets, that's why I, you know, and then with coronavirus, they still don't even have farmers markets properly up. So that's why I never really got went to um, the farmers market either. 
Um, so, you know, I even try to see if I can make health, like make simple health or beauty products on my own, like my own homemade toothpaste and make it sell in that farmer's market. Oh, no, you can't do that, you know. Oh, well, if somebody, like other people, they get help. But me, I'm supposed to fend for myself and be on my own. They feel like, well, if you if you can't do it by yourself, then you shouldn't do it at all. So I guess I'm done rambling on. I had some more stuff to talk about, but certain things slipped my mind of what to talk about. <clears throat> um... I mean, I mean, this was part of my pro, my you know, relation to my g gang stalking and targeting individual, and all these setups being created to set me up for failure, and to make it look like as if I'm a criminal when these people intentionally being dirty and set me up, and I'm the one who has to suffer and be punished and get in trouble, while they just run free after they fucking set me up, even in junior high and high school, and I thought it was just personal bullying or. I didn't realize it was part of the gang stalking thing. And then they set you up and fucking laugh. You want to know why? Because they're witches. They do witchcraft. And some of them do this wicked shit in Jesus' name. So they have to, I almost just sudden have to go pee again. So I'll see y'all later. And thanks for watching. And y'all, I'll be standing, trying to stand for what's right. I don't be trying to go around doing wrong. But all these people try to set you up. But I deserve just as much right. Forget privilege. I deserve as much right to have a car and drive and to be able to work and have, you know, good things just like any fucking body else. So I'll see y'all later. Bye. Whoa, where's my... Okay, here's my mouse. All right, bye, y'all.